I'm Amy Lawrence. Welcome to Gourmet Done Skinny. Today I'm going to show you how I make and food prep my famous healthy grilled chicken. So let's get started. First, I take a big bucket and I pour about a cup of kosher salt in here. Then I buy one of those big packs of uh, chicken thighs from Costco. Um, I usually get, it's about 20 some dollars and it's about seven pounds. And I buy the um, boneless, um, skinless thighs. And I put those in here. You can use chicken breast too. This recipe is great because it keeps your chicken very moist. Um, but I just think the flavor of the thighs is better. So I recommend doing the thighs. So you put your chicken in here, you've got your water and your salt, and then cover it up and put it in the fridge for a few hours um, up to overnight. I actually like doing mine overnight. I just think it tastes the best. And then when you're finished, um, you're going to drain off the chicken and you're going to heat up your grill. I have a Traeger outside and I heat it up to about 350 degrees. And then I lay my chicken out on the grill all in one layer. Sometimes you have to cook it in different batches if your grill isn't big enough. And I love to use my homemade chipotle seasoning, and which is a combination of delicious spices. Um, the recipe is on my website at gourmetdoneskinny.com. And you take the chipotle, chick or chipotle seasoning and you sprinkle it all over the chicken. And then you grill it for about 15 minutes. And then you flip it over. And if you like it pretty spicy, then I would do another uh, layer of uh, seasoning. Now, if you don't want to make the seasoning, another good one is Casa M's Chain Reaction. And I buy the uncontrolled because I'm, I'm a spicy person. But um, you can buy the, un the controlled version so it's not as spicy. And the one thing that's great about... Um, chain reaction and all of Casa M spices is it's low in sodium. And so you sprinkle that on their chicken, um, grill it for about 15 minutes, flip it over and do about 15 minutes more. Um, I would use a, a thermometer to about 165 degrees just to make sure. And then you bring your chicken in and you chop up your chicken. Let me show you what the chicken looks like. That might be kind of nice. There's the chicken. You chop up your chicken into little bites. And um, it's for me, it's easier to chop up the chicken when it's warm. So I tend to um, grill on one day and chop the same day, put it in a big bowl, and then I cover it with saran wrap. And then I put it in um, uh, the refrigerator. And then the next day, when I'm ready, then I will um, switch scenes here. There we go. Then when the next day, then I will package it up, and which is what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you how to use your food sealer. All right, so what we're going to do is I like to buy these bags. Um, oh, let me put them down here. They're, they're already pre-made for you. That's the beauty of it. Um, you can use the rolls if you want and make your own bag. But when you're, you know, when you're packaging up 30 packages of chicken, you really don't want to have to make, stop and make bags for it. So I just buy these on Amazon. Um, they're pretty cheap. These are the pint size. I also buy the quart size for a little bit larger things. And I'm going to write on here chicken because we want to make sure we know what's in here. Um, all right. And then to take your bag, open it up. And it's easier, I found, if you kind of fold down the bag so it's got like a little cuff on it. And then kind of poof it out there so you can see how it is. And then I'll bring the chicken over. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the, I usually like I use a one quarter cup measure and I'm going to just pour that in there. And it depends on your family. If you have a lot and you always have people at home, maybe you want to package it up in bigger things. But, you know, a lot of times I'll do this for lunch and I'll put this over salads or in pasta or in wraps. And so I like the smaller ones. But if I have more people, I'll just thaw out, you know, five packages. But nothing goes to waste. All right, so then we use our sealer here. I like the Anova brand, um, but you can also use, um, you know, the, the Food Saver brand's fine too. I just don't need all the bells and whistles. You want to put the bag um, into the trough. Now, you don't want to put it over. That's, that's too far and it won't seal. So the bag needs to be in the trough. And then you close the bag, push down till it, it's tight and sealed. And, um, and then we're going to vacuum seal it. Now, if I had just made this chicken and um, it's still got a lot of moisture in it, um, then I would probably vacuum seal it for just a bit. But once you see the liquid start to come up towards the machine, then you push seal because you don't want to get the liquid into the little trough. Um, but this chicken's been sitting overnight, so it's easy to, um, to seal. So I can just push vacuum seal just like that, and it's just going to seal just like this. And when you vacuum seal bags like this, they will literally last years. 
So that's the beauty of doing vacuum seal versus putting them in Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags maybe will last a couple months and you think you're going to eat it, but a lot of times it goes to waste or you can't find it in your freezer. And then by the time you find it, it's freezer burned. So this is the best way to seal your food um, with a vacuum sealer. It keeps all the air out, keeps all the moisture out. No bacteria mold can get in there. And it's just a great, great way to do it. And then we take it out and there we're done. And then we just pack up the rest of our chicken. And we've got, I mean, I'm going to have meals forever. And it's just great. I do this with lots of different things. Um, turkey, beef, all sorts of different things. So that's how it is. That's how easy it is. Thanks for joining us today. Bye.